second year head coach Steve Sarkeesian has the Huskies of Washington on the right track as they went 5-7 and seven last year in a rebuilding year. Jake Locker returns with 10 starters on offense along with Chris Polk, 5 yards per carry last year, 5 touchdowns, and Jermaine Kirst, who could be Locker's top target, and they have an experienced offensive line protecting one of the best QBs in the nation. Yeah, you can't underestimate that offensive line. They have a solid offensive line. They have a lot of depth on that offensive line, too, so that's one of the vastly improved units in this country. Also, you look at Jake Locker and those talented wide receivers, they have to step up and make the next step toward greatness. So they have to get better. They have to raise the level of play in order for this offense to take off. And look out for running back Chris Polk to top 1,300 yards. I love the way he ran last year, in particular against LSU. Ran with some power and some conviction. Ran with a purpose. He'll get 1,300 yards easily. Defense coordinator Nick Holt has done a great job. Mason Foster is the player to look out for. The linebacker, he had unbelievable all-around stacks. Five and a half tackles for loss, six pass breakups, three interceptions. So he could do it stopping the run and against the pass. Cornerback Desmond Trufant, he's also a player to look forward to. Even though they lose, Donald Butler and Teo Nashim, Nick Holt could find a way to sew up the defense. Well, you want to keep an eye on true freshman linebacker Victor Burnett, a guy that's going to come in and play right away. Outstanding playmaker, big guy that looks to make plays downhill. But a shaky defense can prove to be detrimental to what Washington is trying to do this year. They lost a lot of key players, a lot of leadership off their defense. So if they can get their defense cut up, and turned around quickly, then it's going to be a special year. But you also look at an active secondary. You said with Trufant should help protect these guys if they can't get a pass rush because they're going to make a lot of plays on the ball. Washington State has been struggling. They're coming off a 1-11 year. This will be Paul Wolf's third year. Jeff Toole will be their quarterback. He dropped back 121 times last year. They have James Montgomery, a Cal transfer. He'll be the starting running back. Their wide receiver unit really needs to step up, though. Well, I think Toole's... Min elimination of minimal states will prove to be tremendous. If he can eliminate those minimal states, then the passing game is going to look that much better. And also, I wonder if James Montgomery transferred tailback. Can he make a difference? Can he make that much of an impact on this offensive football team? And the O-line struggled last year. They lost Kenny Alfred at star center. But I think they may be a little bit better this year, you know, so that's a positive point. You have a solid foundation, and that's going to help everything else out get into place. Leading tackler Alex Hoffman Ellis is back at linebacker to ta tag along with defensive end Travis Long and defensive back Chima Nuwachkuku is back in the secondary. Well, stopping the run is a must. Should be a mandate. 236 yards per game given up. That gives you, that ranks you 110th out of 120 Division I teams, FBS teams. So that's a must. They have to stop the run number one in order to have some success. Travis Long, high motor guy, should excel as a true sophomore. A tremendous playmaker. If you want to see a guy that knows how to play football the right way, that's the guy you want to take a look at and keep an eye on him. And the healthier secondary equals better than 2009. So that secondary is going to be healthy. So you look at secondary down down in, secondary linebacker D-line, and that order is strength of that team. But if they can get that for the quarterback, you're going to see a lot change in, you know, Pullman Washington this year. Uh, this would be a good year for them to get better. They have a lot of talent on the team. Our 2010 Pac-10 awards and predictions. Toughest schedule in the Pac-10. Got to go to the Huskies. They open up at BYU. They host Nebraska a couple weeks later. And in conference, they're at USC, at Arizona, and at Oregon. Three contenders, so I give it to Washington. That's a tough slate. I'm going to go with UCLA. They got to go to Kansas State, which is a tough place to play now that Bill Snyder is back. They also got to go to Texas, you know, play the Longhorns on their team that's going to be competing for the national title. And they also have to play Houston. Houston is a quiet team. Case Keenum back in the fold. That offense is tremendous. It's going to test that defense at UCLA to see how great they can come back, but that's just, I'd give UCLA the toughest schedule. And recruiting wise, a lot of teams doing well. Washington, Oregon, Oregon State does a quiet job, but I'm going with USC because they just bring in the big boys. Chantrell Henderson is going to see a lot of time at right tackle. He's an absolute moose. They bring in three wide receivers in Robert Woods, Markeith Ambles, and a guy you mentioned in the preview, Kyle Prater, running back Dylan Baxter is going to see some time, and Xavier Grimble, the number one tight end. So USC, Pete Carroll left um, Kiffin a great class. Yeah, you look at, I go with USC as well. Central Henderson, 6'8", 330, big man on tackle. Dylan Baxter, I can't, I'm a running back, so when you see running backs that have explosive and shiftiness and guys that can pull away from defenders, that's what I like to see. He's going to get some time in a crowded backfield, which is impressive for a guy that's going into USC as a running back. Best pro prospect, 
A lot of people would think Jake Locker, this guy, that guy, but go at Oregon State defensive tackle Steven Paella. He could put it all together, and I think he could be a top 20 pick. I'm going to stay on defense and go with Raheem Moore, guy, free safety out of UCLA, because you look at, think about it, Saints last year, Devin Sharper, a lot of interceptions, a couple returns for touchdowns, you look at Baltimore Ravens, Air Reed. If you have a safety back there that can eliminate mistakes and make plays on the ball and take it back post four, that's a tremendous talent you have to have on the team. Ten interceptions, you can't ignore that. Best pro prospect. Team on the rise, you can say Stanford with Andrew Luck, but he may be leaving. Who knows when Harbaugh is going to mm -hmm. bolt for Michigan, when Michigan eventually Third might five. get rid of their player. So I'm going to go with UCLA. I think New is putting it together. You mentioned Malcolm Jones at running back, Jordan James too, and they keep bringing the recruits. So before you know it, UCLA is going to be up there with a big dog like USC. I'm going with Washington State. I think they're a team on the rise. In order to know where you're going, you have to know where you've been. You look at where Washington State has been, they've been successful in the Pac-10, but you look at where they were, what was left there when the new coach got there, was cover was bare, they had a lot of talent that probably wasn't Pac-10 talent, but he's getting his guys in now, they have to give him more time, he's doing a great job up there, turning this whole program around, but I think Washington State in a year or two is going to be a team that's going to jump back up and surprise some things, this is, they have a lot of talent up there in the great, great Northwest, and he's getting the right type of talent to get back to Cougarville. Offensive player of the year, he's back. LaMichael James fits the system beautifully, that spread offense, and it's he's going to excel again. He suspended one game, but still, he's the most potent offensive player in the league. Jaquiz Rogers is also good, but LaMichael James in that system fits it perfectly. I'm going with Jaquiz Rogers. He's going to have these guys fighting for a Pac-10 title. And he's going to be healthy, I believe, this year. So he saw the benefit of being healthy last year when they got him. So I'm going with Jaquiz Rogers, my offensive MVP. Defensive player of the year, Arizona State. Vontae's perfect, only a sophomore. The way he played as a freshman, can you imagine after this year and next year, he's going to be another future NFL guy. Yeah, I'm going with perfect as well, too. This guy is a tremendous linebacker, overly aggressive, but control the grass. Sometimes it causes him to get a lot of penalties, a lot of personal fouls. He has to cut down on those, but you can't tell him to limit his aggressiveness. He's a defensive guy. You want your craziest guys on defense, aggressive guys on defense. Perfect. And he was this here. close to going to USC also. Right. And now for our winners. I love Washington, but that schedule is brutal. I like Jake Locker. Not as a top five pick like the guys are saying as a quarterback, mm -hmm. but I like Washington all together as Nick Holt. Oregon State, I like too, and Oregon, but they don't have Masoli. Oregon State, really want to go with them, but it's got to be SC. I'm going to go with SC. I think Carroll left Pippen too many weapons. This is why he bolted so fast to Southern California. I'm going to go with the Trojans. Down year last year, they're going to get back on top. They're going to get to the Rose Bowl. I'm going with Oregon State. I think Oregon State has enough to win the Pac-10 and make a push quietly for a national title. They're, they're, a lot of this is going on in Corvallis. Mike Riley needs to be appreciated as a head coach. He does an outstanding job up there. Jaquiz Rogers, James Rogers, that defense is going to fly around the football. So I think Oregon State has enough to upset USC, who still has some questions at quarterback with Barkley. You know, still a young guy, even though they have their own questions at Oregon State. But I think Oregon State is that much better right now than USC. Just by a smidge, it's going to be a key game. When they, when these two well, this is a good time to buy the SC stock because it's a little down. Before you know, it's going back up. But all these teams are going to contend. Don't forget about Stanford and Arizona. I know they're not sexy, but I was close to picking Arizona too. So this is a wide open conference. It's going to be an interesting year. A lot of good games, a lot of non-conference games, and it's just going to be a great season yeah, you can, out west. You can also see Oregon. If, if Costa come out throwing, and oh, yeah. give them a whole new element. Because teams expect the quarterback to run, but the quarterback can come out and throw the football. That's dangerous. They're going to use a dynamic duo there. They're probably yeah, going to use both quarterbacks. It will be very interesting in the Pac-10 this season. For more, visit footballgameplan.com slash NCAA or visit youtube.com slash footballgameplan.